Oh, yes. What impact? We got a lot to get into this week. We got tag team title matches, world heavyweight title matches, X Division title matches, every title match you could think of. We got that to preview for Slammiversary. And we got a couple good matches, dope matches leading up to that for this week's episode of Impact Wrestling. Welcome to Blunt Impact with the Bobby and Mary Jane. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, heels and heelettes, we are back. You know it's Blunt Impact. I am your boy, Chris G, joined by my co-host, the three-time, three-time, three-time baby-making champion of the world, Ness. And we are joined by our co-host, Mary Jane. Ness, how are you feeling today, baby? Feeling mighty fine, good brother. You know, my favorite day of the week, one of my favorite pastimes us reviewing impact wrestling you know making an impact with our blunts or joints or pens just with mary jane you know it's all good in the hood that's it you could have ate mary jane it would have been all good here it's all fine with us we will be quickly previewing slammiversary 2021 happening this saturday we'll be uh previewing that after the show, after we get into this episode of Impact Wrestling, which is the July 15th edition of Impact Wrestling, we'll also be covering real quick, just going through some things that happened for last week's episode. We apologize for not coming and covering that on the YouTube channel like we always do. Ness had a lot on his plate with the re-debut of MLW with Azteca Underground. We got Battle Riots. He also had the best in the world for Ring of Honor. And me... I'm just a dad and I get caught up in shit. So we apologize for missing last week's episode, but we're here for this week. We want to remind everybody at home before we get into it, please like this video, put your thumbs up, hit that bell for the notifications so you know when we drop a video. We're going live next week, everybody, Thursday, right after Impact Wrestling, about a half hour after 1035, 1040. We will be live wherever you can catch us, YouTube. Twitter, Facebook, we're all over the place. We will be there. Remember to comment, leave your comments. Let us know how you feel about the show. Let us know how you feel about us. You know, if you think we're doing a good job, show us some praise. If you don't think we're doing a good job, fuck off. But we appreciate the feedback. Yeah, and of course, <laughs> of course, share it with everybody you know. And I mean everybody. There is no age range. Well, all right, let's keep it above 18. We don't want to get sued for cursing too much. And then, of course... Subscribe to the True Heel Heat YouTube channel. Be part of the family. Ness, are you ready to light your Mary Jane? Yes, sir. I am ready. You've been waiting all goddamn day for this. I hear that. I mean, I've been smoking all day, and I've still been waiting all day to light this blunt. <laughs> we hope everybody at home is gonna light a blunt with us, maybe a joint, maybe a bomb, maybe a pipe, whatever it is, just have some Mary Jane in your hand. I don't care if you gotta eat it, just eat it along as we count down from three. Ready, Ness? Yes, sir, I'm ready. Three, two, one. All right. Let's quickly review last week's episode. We're just going to go through some matches, whatever. We don't have to go into in-depth. We just want to set up this episode real quick. We had a match between Brian Myers and Jake something. Brian Myers won. Uh, we had a, uh, 
I believe he won. I can't even remember at this point. We had a Diana Perrazzo versus Lady Frost match. Lady Frost is new, but she had an impressive moonsault, which she uh, failed to hit, but still impressive nonetheless. Diana gets to win. Susan and Kimberly have a tag team match against Rosemary and Havoc. You can guess who won that one. But backstage, Kimberly is looking for a backup plan, and her backup plan is Sue Young. We'll see what happens this week if they were able to get that done. We have an All About Me segment with Tennille, Kayla with a K, and Jazz, where they basically disrespect Jazz. They uh, they jump her, if I'm not mistaken. They might have yeah. beat her up in, on the set. And uh, Jordan Grace and Rachel Allen were having none of this, so they set up a tag team match for this week's episode. We also get a four-way Diener versus Carl Anderson versus Swan, Rich Swan versus TJP. All four of these guys will, well, maybe all four of these guys will be part of the tag team match at Slammiversary for the titles. Slammiversary 2011, we have the flashback moment. It is Angelina Love taking on Mickey James. Maybe something to mm. keep in the back of your mind as we go into Slammiversary. We get a Chris Bay interview where he says he is not a good guy. He is not on their side. He chose his side. Chris Bayside. That might come into play as well. We also have Morrissey destroying three jabronis. One of them looked like my second cousin. <laughs> <laughs> we also have an episode of Swingers Palace that actually never happened because as Chris Saban sits down and says, I fucking love this place. Moose comes out and just makes them eat poker chips. And then we also have Kenny Omega and Don Callis entering for the contract signing, but we see Sammy Callahan. He gets locked up for what? Sammy Callahan has a bogus fucking video of him getting attacked by Sammy Callahan, but the cameraman was Johnny Swinger and Johnny Bravo was portraying Sammy Callahan. We see that as Scott is in the ring during the contract signing. Sammy Callahan does his little glitchy thing, comes, attacks Kenny Omega with a bat, hits him with a package pile driver and puts him through the table to end the show. So that was a really fire episode that we missed last week. And we wanna, it was we wanna, pretty good. Yeah. It was a good episode. We kind of, we, we want to apologize for that one. This week we have to get into this. It was the go home show for Slammiversary 2021 happening this Saturday at eight o'clock. Let's get into it. We're going to start with Tennille Dashwood, and Caleb with a K taking on Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering. This was a decent match. Solid match, if I may say. Jordan makes Caleb her bitch to start. It was cool to see. Uh, the faces have good teamwork, double spine busters. Just really good chemistry between the two. Uh, Rachel takes down Caleb's pants at one point. And uh, my man had the Victoria's Secret special. I hope he was going home to some lucky woman because she was in for a surprise after this match. But yes, he hit, he hit her with the Rick Rude. He yes. started swinging his hips. Yeah, I thought he was going to drop down, and I thought it was about to be all over from there. Yeah, Caleb I mean, was he, trying to. Yeah, Caleb was trying to give her the little Caleb. This uh, would have went from uh, NS fourteen to fucking rated R real quick <laughs> if you did that. But yes, the heels. Take control briefly in the match, but Jordan Grace with a hot tag. Um, I don't know how to say this. I have the screenshot somewhere. I have to look for it because it's just too important not to pass up. You know what? I can't even look for it at this point. But uh, <laughs> looks like Jordan Grace tickles Caleb's butthole at one point when he's on the second row. <laughs> or he, she, oh, gooch, she grabbed his gooch. She said something to him. While he was on that second rope where he just like laughed in agony. And then she had a nice power <laughs> <on him>. <laughs> <laughs> Laughed in agony. <laughs> laughed in agony. He was just like, Hola! like I don't know, man. It looked like she tickled his booty. That was that was weird. But um, yeah, nice back and forth to end to, towards the end of the match. Caleb almost kills Jordan Grace with a power slam, just drops her right on her head. I don't Yo. know if Grace didn't jump and get enough height. Or uh, Caleb just, I don't know, maybe misjudged the, the trajectory. Not enough rotation, something. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't, it could have been, it looked like it was just awkward on both sides. It, it didn't go bad. Jordan's fine, but she looked like she almost landed on her head on that one. But eventually they had a nice double team move on Caleb for the win. Hugs all around. 
Jordan Grace and Tenniel Dashwood are back on, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering are back on the same page. And I enjoyed this opener. How'd you feel about this? Yeah, same, man. This was a great opener. A lot of fun uh, to watch Jordan and Rachel Ellering get back on the same page. You know, they've been through a lot lately. And literally because of Tenniel, her and her mind games getting into the head of Jordan, you know, but they really are the perfect pair of, you know, Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering both complement each other very well. It showed in this match. Uh, Tanil and Caleb complement each other as well. You've seen the, the matching Argyle uh, ring attire. You know what I'm yep. saying? I wonder if Tanil had on leopard print bra and panties. Who knows? They might just, that might be, <laughs> they might be in sync there as well. But, you know, <laughs> you never know. But yeah, it was nice. They needed this one. You know, they did it for jazz. That's another nice little moment. And now they have some momentum <laughs> possibly going back into looking into, you know, vying for the knockouts tag team championships down the line. Yeah. Re rebuild them. Let them regain their momentum. I'm, I'm here for, for a little while. until we eventually have to turn one of them. I like how they're slow building this though. You know, too often we see teams that haven't been around too long and they start feuding. This one, right. give them a chance. Let them. I, I thought it was being drug out at first, but now they drove me back in. I like where they're going with this. Diana Perazzo, we have a nice little vignette about how she's ran through the roster. And now she's having a contract signing with Scott Diamore. She is highly offended. She is uncomfortable signing this contract because she doesn't even know who the fuck her opponent is. She feels disrespected. She runs down her accomplishments, which, uh, Scott gets pretty bored at real fast because he's been <laughs> We've all heard it before. Yeah, he wasn't trying to hear shit. that shit at all. He wasn't trying to hear that shit. Uh, line of the night, she goes, God knows where Ty is at. Yeah, she's fucking managing who? over on who? NXT. Ty yeah, oh, who, who's, who's that? that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know some lady named Frankie that looks just like her, and they're wasting her talents on a show just fucking being a manager. But, hey, that's besides the point. You could hear more about that on NX3 with me and Ness. But yes, she signs the contract anyway because she's pissed. She wants to prove that she is the best. Scott Diamore leaves by dropping some nice Easter eggs. He says this match, <laughs> this card could be a hot mess or it could be iconic. When she says, you're really not going to tell me who I'm going up against? Ha! No way, Jose. Tommy Dreamer pops in and says, we haven't signed that guy yet. <laughs> <laughs> I love when they break the fourth wall. That, yes. that was great. Yes. It was, it's perfect timing. You have very good comedic timing on Impact Wrestling. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, we'll, 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 I guess we'll get into the prediction for the actual outcome of the match, but we might as well give our predictions of who's actually going to be in that match right now. Ness, who do you think is going to be in that Shit, match? Shit, you will put me on a high seat, bro. I have no fucking idea. I want to say, I want to say Mickey James. Possibly. I mean, it's just obvious, though. Are they making it too obvious? But it's an obvious choice that the fans would but, like. Honestly, but we'll get into it. All right, because I'll, I'll I'll give you another scenario a little later. Okay, but, okay, okay. But, yeah, I, I, at this point, yeah, I don't think they're going to debut anybody new because if you debut somebody new, like, they have to beat – they have to beat Deanna, you know? Like, there's there's no way around it. And but It has to be, like, a fucking Jazzy Gaber or some shit like that. Like, somebody very huge. dominant on the indies or, like... Yeah, like, like a huge... Like, somebody huge. The end that can wrestle. Yeah. Like, it's just as good as Deanna. So, yeah. like, yeah, no, 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 you know... No just the shooter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't want to say you know, like I love that, them. No, yeah, yeah, no, exactly. no, no, no. I, I, I got I love for both huge. of them. Of course. Cassie Lee and, and Jessica McKay, whatever their names are, whatever their real names are. But, um, they're not impact title right off the gate you know no. worthy they're not that's just a fact um it has to be an imposing physical figure if i had a like fantasy book and just say a random person to debut uh, yeah i would go like somebody like jazzy gaber if she's still able to wrestle because we haven't heard i guess we haven't heard from her in a while but she was a uh, a nice talent she's big she's believable she has fanfare so Something like that. But I'm gonna go with Mickey James as well. I think I think Mickey's the obvious choice. I think she's the right choice. You know, so yeah, for this we'll, definitely. We'll, we'll see. Uh we'll talk about who wins later in the show. But next up, we have 
Tasha steals, taking on Havoc. Uh, just a precursor for what's going to happen at Slammiversary. There will be a tag team title match before between these two teams. Um, Havoc dominating the first half of the match. And we finally get into a commercial break. We come back. Tasha gains the advantage eventually. Starts twerking with Havoc in the corner. I wish I, was, uh, I wish I was Havoc in the corner. Yeah, we 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 uh we wish all that wish upon a star, wish all that flavor. Yes, and all that fire. <laughs> Havoc regains the momentum, and she's just too powerful. She hits the tombstone on Tasha Steeles for the win. We go backstage. Rosemary and Havoc are uh, chatting it up creepily, of course, but. You are coming into this match either as a part of the K or as an outsider. But the only one that could join us together is Father James Mitchell, who has just escaped death. We'll talk about that later. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but uh, yes, he has just escaped death, and he can make this happen. So it looks like we are getting our wish. Havoc is going to officially be a part of the K. I like it. I like it. Yes. How would you like the match, and how do you feel about Havoc being part of the K? I like the match going into it. I like that they're giving um, Havoc and Rosemary both momentum going into this tag team title match. Like, I kind of feel, and now with, you know, the joining of Havoc to the decay, you know, having Father James Mitchell, you know, do this quote unquote ceremony, I'm pretty sure she's going to come out with like face paint on or something like that, like a new gear, just a new ring attire. Or just something different, you know, that, than what she has now. But it's a great pairing. Like, in my opinion, you could have uh, Havoc, how she is now currently, and Rosemary together. Or just Havoc in, you know, the decay, just like how she is. But uh, that's that's not a nitpick. I just I can't wait to see what they do with her. Uh, but, yeah, again, the match was decent. It was, it was pretty good. Now, going into... Uh, slam anniversary. I don't know. Fire and flavor took two L's back to back. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, well, 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 don't jump. No, the I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't. No, I ain't jumping the gun. We ain't jumping the gun. gun. I'm just we saying. Jumping I'm just, the gun. No, I ain't jumping the gun. I am, I'm not. No, I ain't doing that yet. But I'm just saying, you know, they got to get it together. Yeah, we they both definitely do, especially against a team like this. Two experienced vets, ex knockout champions. They are a force to be reckoned with. Word. Next up, we have Macklin coming out against Kyle Harrow. Uh, this motherfucker got a fanny pack. Straight out of the Johnny Swinger school. I was going to say, yeah, he looked yeah, like yeah, Johnny yeah. Swinger's nephew or some shit. Oh, yeah. That's, that's my nephew, Daddy. He needed a gig, <laughs> Daddy. So he got him one. Uh, Steve Macklin just talking shit throughout this whole match. Uh, hits that beautiful lawn dart. Says, you look like a jackass. Uh, the jabroni tries to come back, but Michael says, fuck your moves and no sells everything. Mac Word. Just... <laughs> Word. That shit caught me off guard. I was like, what the fuck? He did... Oh, okay. That, I see how this is going. Yep. Just just no sells him. Says, fuck you. Hits him with a few death elbows. Hits the finisher. One, two, three. And then afterwards, we get a solid post-match promo. He is tired of waiting. All you're doing is giving him time, time to time to prepare. He's tired of it. He's tired of it. He's coming. So he's gonna attack somebody. Hopefully it's that slam anniversary. We'll see. But uh another impressive match for Steve Mac. I like the intensity. He's 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 uh he's believable. He's a fucking ex Marine, if I'm not mistaken. Like he's <laughs> he's a badass. And are you starting to grow on me? I'm like, why? Why didn't anybody see this? You know, because of the bullshit they ago. had him on fucking NXT doing Forgotten Sons. You know, I, I was doing. Well, he was a like, forgotten son. Exactly, he literally, I literally was a forgotten son. Got them and now. The now team. we're trying to remember the name Macklin. So, I dig it. How'd you feel about it? Yeah, I'm kind of over the squash matches because that's pretty much what they are. I'm ready to see where it's going to go now. Like the word, the the promo he had. It seemed like he is going to attack somebody. You know, and that's what I want. I want to see him in a program with people like actual talent. Uh, like when Morrissey came in, you know, he went right after guys, went after Willie Mack, went after Rich Swan, uh, Eddie Edwards. Like he, you know what I'm saying? He's 
doing something when he comes into the the uh the company and not just having these squash matches you know like i'm already impressed with what steve macklin can do now because he definitely wasn't able to show that shit in nxt but now i want to see how he works with other actual impact talent to like progress a storyline see how he works i i love his in-ring work now you know it fits his character and you know he can he can talk a little shit during a match. I think he says something like about how like everybody's leaving him or like so everybody's quitting uh, on him. Everybody, everybody's quitting he, on him. He's yeah. gonna make you quit. He's gonna make do quit like how everybody else was quitting on him. I'm just like, oh, you talking that shit now? Because you know, <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, all right, okay. And he talks like you know he's a loner. Like there is nobody around him. So I want to see more of that character in depth too. And. You know, like I said, with the talent they have in Impact, I'm pretty sure you could put on some very good matches. Yeah, there's a there's a lot to be excited about with Macklin, and he has a very brawler, hard hitting, roughneck style, which I don't think Impact has a lot of. No, it's not really a lot of guys. I mean, yeah, dudes so, that can brawl, but it's like it's other like you know who yeah. can like really brawl like. Yeah, like Eric, I feel like Eric Young, he's one of them. Uh, Sammy, guys like that. Yeah, Sammy, but, yeah. But this, but this feels like a breath of fresh air. You know what I mean? I feel like they need a character like this, right? Um, you know, not to compare him to Moxley, but like a Moxley type character. You know, a guy who doesn't give a fuck, just wants to beat people up. I think that's a good character that impacts yeah. missing. Uh, because Sammy is on a different level. Sammy's his own entity. He used to be that guy, now he's his own entity. So we could, we could have a, we, we can use a Macklin around here. Next up, we got eight man action. We have Ace Austin, Madman Fulton, uh, Rohit Raju, and Shara taking on the team of Petey Williams, Trey Miguel, Josh Alexander, and Chris Bay, the baby face, or so we thought. Dun dun dun. So we thought. Well, let's get into the match. Let's find out. Cool match. I enjoyed it. Uh, first, it was a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. You know, he was just working over the baby face, interchanging spots, which is cool. You don't want to give everybody a fucking full car crash, especially with Slam Reversal coming up in this ultimate X match that we're going to be previewing later. But uh, eventually it does break down into a car crash, which we get a nice preview of what's going to happen Saturday. But including Shara and Fulton, which I'm sure they'll be involved with the match somehow. Chris Bay rolls up Shara to steal the win. The heels try to have a post-match beatdown afterwards, but Bay cleans house with the chair. It's a baby face, Chris Bay, right? Where the fuck is Trey Miguel, though? Trey Miguel's in the back. He's still recuperating. He finally gets into the ring, and as he gets into the ring, Chris Bay takes him out with a chair and escapes the ring before the faces can beat him up. Goes into the crowd. He goes, I didn't pick a side. I picked my side. You're picking Chris Bay's side. <sighs> you almost got this, motherfucker. You almost, you finessed us. You finessed the fans. You finessed the fans. And we you got appreciate exactly. you. Yeah. We appreciate you even more for it. Yes. Thank you, Chris Bay, for being yourself. Stay true to yourself. Always be a finesse. But uh, this is good shit. I'm it just, I, you know, the match itself, it wasn't crazy, but it, it was a good preview to set up what's going to happen. On Saturday, how'd you feel about this? Yeah, it was. It definitely was a precursor to what was going to happen Saturday. Um, well, you know, just a, certain things that happened during the match. Uh, a lot of interaction going on that I should play into it. I'm just ready to see Madman Fulton and Shara take each other out because I like. I said. I said that shit was going to happen from like the jump. That oh, these guys are going to come together. Neither one, neither Shara or um, Madman Fulton's going to let you know Ace Austin or Real Heat Raju climb the Ultimate X and get that shit. They're going to stop each other clearly, so that'll be a nice little element to the match. Uh, psh, damn man, is is so much going on here? Then Chris Bay, you know, like you said, the Ultimate Finesser. We got exactly what we wanted. We wanted him to be the Ultimate Finesser. He he finessed the fuck out of me. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I got for that. We made a whole fucking episode talking about how he was a babyface. Yeah, I mean, quite possibly though. To look at it, 
You can still be a baby it. face. Exactly, you know, because it is every man yeah, for just himself. Gotta protect, yeah, protect your interests. That's it. Yeah, he's a tweener. Every... He's a tweener. Right. I'll take him as a tweener. He's, he's good like that. Why not? Now we're going to see whatever happens here on fourth. He do some heel shit that needs to heal again, guys. <laughs> Next up, we got Brian Myers. He's backstage with uh, Sammy Beal. He wants somebody to take care of Matt Cardona. So he sees her nan daddy backstage. <laughs> Uh, we got the creepy cameraman, of course, playing two angles. Uh, Sam Beal tries to speak. You speak when you're spoken to. Shut the fuck up, Sam. Shut the fuck up, Sam. Um, Hernandez is not interested. Swinger got him with a good deal. A good deal. He gets dental. He got better benefits than me. I'm about to work at Swinger's Palace. There's a mystery guy or gal behind the door. And he says, you got history with Cardona. You want to do this for me? Come on. They talk business. Myers comes out with Sam Beal. Matt Cardona's out there. And he finally admits that Jake something is a professional. But you're not a star, kid. You're not a star. Black Trunks, good luck getting that over, pal. <laughs> the most popular wrestler of all time wore playing Black Trunks. Yeah, I don't know. There's a little guy named Stone Cold Steve Austin. I don't know if you ever heard of him. But, yeah, got over with Black Trunks. Good shit, though. We eventually have a brawl. Brian Myers is taking advantage, and he is about he is about to lay the fucking move. I don't know what move it's called anymore. He's about to lay the move on Brian Myers. But out comes to Neil Dashwood. Hits him with a low blow. And it looks like we're going to have a mixed tag team match. A mixed tag team match because Cardona's pissed. He's not here to follow Myers. He sees Scott Diamor in the backstage. Scott says, you know, you got beef with both of them now. If you could find a partner, if we can find a partner for you, can you do that? We'll have this match. Scott says Slammiversary will be a hot mess. Hot mess. Might as well start with the prediction now. Not for the outcome, but who do you think is going to be Matt Cardona's part? I have no idea. Really? Wait, the hot mess Lauren Van S? It got to be fucking Chelsea Green. That's... It can't. She's in Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor is not exclusive. Yeah, they are. Not all of them. Well, not all of them, but she's like in the. Eh, she might. It might. In the women's tournament. They well, need she... women. Yeah, you but don't, she's you don't hurt. Think they might have she's just hurt been. still. Well, I don't know I how think, their taping. Nah, I, I don't know how their tapings I, are. I honestly think I think that was a work to cover for the fact that she has to wait until Saturday. Word. So like her contract clears the ninety days. I mean, oh, no, she, the ninety day got got cleared. Oh, so then I don't know. I don't know, man. I still think it's Chelsea Green. Man. It couldn't be. I don't know. I mean, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, bro, to fucking tag team with your fiance, even if it's just a one off. That is true. Like, with it, no, it's I mean, a book, it's a booking. It's a booking. It's a booking, and they're gonna give her good money for it. And she is, she's because I was right thinking now. that I'm like, nah, it definitely can't be because of that. But you are, it is a booking, you know. I mean, you never know, man. I let's see, Ring of Honor, Impact, all these, all these companies are starting to work well together. So we'll see what happens. Moose and Chris Saban, we get the history recap about what's been going on the last month, month and a half between them. Um, they're getting ready to gear up to have a one-on-one -on -one match for the same anniversary. But before that, we get Moose taking on her man daddy. And uh, Moose dominates this man. It's a squash. But out comes Chris Not Saban. really. Yeah, it was, but not really. Nah, he got her man off her <laughs> You got but no, I'm gonna give my, no, no, I'm gonna give Hernandez his props because there's nobody. I'm not gonna say nobody, but it's a few, very limited amount of guys on that roster that can take it to Moose. That Hernandez, the way you know Hernandez can, but yeah, yeah he got his ass kicked though. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. I mean, he got 90 seconds of offense, and it's cool. But uh, he is like 52. After that, Moose shit. ragged him. Yeah, Moose He's ragged him after shit. that. Hit the spear one, two, three. He attempts to break his ankle with the chair, but Chris Saban makes the save. 
Oh, that's the wrong screenshot. This is what happens on Blunt Impact. Chris Saban makes the save. <laughs> it does happen, though. And Moose flees after Chris Saban tries to take the leg out. And uh, I'm looking forward, looking forward to this match. I wasn't, like, super hyped about it, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. We'll make that prediction later. What do you think about this segment? Was it needed? Did we need this heat? We needed more heat for this feud? No, nah, because it can chase everybody. So, like, you don't <laughs> even, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he doesn't like nobody else on the roster. And pretty much the rest of the roster hates him as well until they need something from him. But for the most part, I already know how Moose is just thinking about himself. So, you know. The uh, honorable Chris Saban, you know, he don't fuck with that. So, yeah, I, I expect it. I expect this match to be good. Like, you know, I don't expect it to be like crazy, but you know, not much so much of a blood feud, but they can definitely like take out a lot of damage on each other. But, um, yeah, this this segment tonight, the match, Hernandez got his ass kicked. Yeah. <laughs> Moose looks strong going into Slammiversary. And uh yeah, Chris Saban, you know, he gets his gets his come, you know, gets some payback on Moose. So everybody looks good going into uh Slam Anniversary. Yes, sir. Before we get into the main event, uh, we're just gonna touch on a couple of segments. Sammy Callahan cuts a vignette, it doesn't care about Meltzer ratings, doesn't care about six stars, seven star matches. Everybody start with that shit. Don't care about what Dave Meltzer. Yeah, do. well, I mean it's the hot. It's the hot way to get the IWC be like, oh, you know. So yeah. it's uh, it's getting old real quick, but it is what it is. Uh, loves professional wrestling. Kenny doesn't. He disrespects wrestling. He wants to beat up anybody who disrespects wrestling. Challenges Kenny Omega to a disqualific no disqualification match at Slammiversary. So it looks like we're gonna have a no DQ match, which should be pretty wild <laughs> between where these two guys are willing to do anything. How you feel about that? It being a new disqualification match. I don't know why Sammy did that. <laughs> I don't know why he did that. That was his. That was his swan song. Like you just ended the match for yourself there. No disqualification. I know he wants to do whatever to Kenny, but now you just made it legal that the Good Brothers or anybody else can interfere in this match and make yeah. you lose. You know what I'm saying? Like, but. He did say he did mention that you know I know your boys are gonna come and try to mess us up. So let's just get it out of the way. Let's do things my way. So I think the point of having a no disqualification match so is you could try to take out the rest of the elite early than have Kenny all by himself. So uh I think that's gonna be something to look forward to on the same anniversary. You think Doc he brings, has, you, th you think he brings back up? Nah, nobody likes him. Uh <laughs> Except maybe us, but uh, I didn't get booked. Don Callis, he has a rebuttal. He says Sammy is a piece of shit human being. Not exactly in those words, but something like that. And he shouldn't have a job just hyping up Kenny for that match. Slammiversary 2013, we got a flashback moment. It is an ultimate X match. I believe it was only Kenny King, Suicide, and Chris Sabin, which Chris Sabin wins. Just a reminder that the ultimate X match is uh, something to behold. And I'm glad that, like, I don't mean to say it this way, but you know how in, like, this era of slam of uh, Impact, there was a lot of, like, comp tickets and shit? I'm yeah. glad, like, the return to Slammiversary this year is going to be actual fans that want to watch Impact Wrestling. Right. Because <laughs> I, think, I think there are fans out there. It's just... No, there definitely is, bro. Like, yeah, and, I mean, I, and, and the um the NOG group, you know, where I'm, like, they get mad love. Impact is, but they turn their shit around. You know, a lot of people be like, "Oh, the TNA, Dixie Carter." Like, shut the fuck up! Like, it's none of that Give anymore. It a chance. Yeah, Give it you a chance. know, yeah. And they always poke fun of that shit in Impact. So. Yeah, and then when WWE, then the fucking WWE signs an Impact fucking talent. Oh, I always liked him. Oh yeah, I was rooting for him all the time. Shut the just shut up. Shut up. <laughs> shut your mouth. We get a Morris even yet, just showing dominance. He has a match going up against Eddie Edwards at Slammiversary. We'll preview that. Kimberly is pacing and waiting 
outside of the room that she sent Sue Young in with uh, Father James Mitchell. It's Father James Mitchell. Susan comes out. She said, oh, Father James had trouble summoning Sue Young, and he won't be coming out anytime soon. And she <laughs> loses her shit and drags Kimberly into the room. She looks nuts, creeped out, and I'm kind of turned on. I don't know what's going to happen in Slammiversary now. I don't know if we're going to see Sue. Well, I don't I don't know if we're going to see anything at Slammiversary concerning this, but I don't know what we're going to see going forward with these two. I'm kind of intrigued. How would you feel about this? <laughs> Shit, I honestly hope that uh, Sue Young turns uh, – Kimberly into like some other shit look like Sue Young, but she probably killed her, you know, hypothetically speaking. But yeah, I mean, Deanna cut them off. They might as well go their separate ways. They're not really that great of a tag team. It's just not not under the Susan, the Susan no. character, which is it's entertaining as fuck. I love I love Susan, but it's you know no. But if they want to be taken serious, exactly, maybe this yeah. is a character change to make them be taken serious. Um, which would be cool. I'm all for depth in the women's division, so why not? Yeah. Uh, we all know what Sue Young is capable of. And Kimberly Calder, so um, I'm with it. But we get into the main event. It is Doc Gallows taking on Joe Doring, taking on Falaba, taking on Willie Mack. Each of these men represent a tag team that will be going up against each other for the tag team titles at same anniversary. Mm-hmm. Most of these men will be in this match, we think. We'll get into that later. But uh, not a bad match, man. It was a hot fight. I mean, nothing crazy. Just a slugfest. All big guys just hitting each other hard. Uh, a lot of brawling. Joe Doring, Doc Gallows have a, uh, a nice little face-off. In the beginning, tease a little tension. Nothing happens. But then they get back to it and have a nice little, nice little real hot fight briefly. I hope we see more of that at Slammiversary. But eventually, Joe Doring pins Falap Ba for the win to close out the show. Filing by design, standing tall. I'm pretty sure Joe Doring will be in the match at Slammiversary. And I'm guessing Rhino. That would probably be the best tag team to put out there. Unless Eric Young is good to go. Um, I think he's dealing with some injuries still. But but hopefully we see him. Who knows? But uh, yeah. Decent way to cap off impact. It wasn't the greatest go home show for a big event, but it wasn't bad. How'd you feel about this main event? Yeah, it was what it was. You know, I liked the uh, the match from last week better. You know, with the smaller versions of the teammates. <laughs> you know, it was just a little bit more action packed. But this was this was alright. Just showcased everybody's strength. Um, speaking of strength, Joe Doran going into this Sunday, or I'm sorry. This Saturday night at Slammiversary, looking the strongest, you know, picked up the victory for, you know, not only his team, but as a champion for the rest of Violent by Design, you know. I really can't get into this without a prediction. It's not really a prediction, but it's the it's just the, the fact that they can lose the titles, but they not get pinned for it. So, yeah. That I'm, sure. I'm saying if I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that would be the best option, you know. Yeah, I agree. Speaking of predictions, let's get into the slam anniversary card. We're not going to start with that match, so we're actually going to start with W. Morrissey taking on Eddie Edwards. I got W. Morrissey. Who do you got? Are we going to like keep an actual score? We could, we could, we could. Right. I'll, I'll write it. I'll write this, it down. We started today. Started today. This is sorry. Started. Started on this Fuck, I just, I just did something. I just did the worst shit ever. I said we All got right. the scoreboard going on. All right. Pay per views only. Pay per views only. All right, bet. Yeah, that works. And um, special shit. Fuck. I'm gonna give it to Eddie Edwards. Interesting. <clears throat> I would. I was kind of leaning towards Eddie towards uh, leaning towards Eddie too because I had heard that uh, I had read that Morrissey has not signed a long term contract with Impact, so Eddie Edwards could possibly take him out, send Morrissey off for a little while. But I, I think Morrissey is going to stick around. He's looking good at Impact. He's probably making decent money. I think he's getting good exposure. So 
We'll see what happens. I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Morrissey. Next up, we have Brian Myers and Tennille Dashwood taking on Matt Cardona and a mystery partner. I think it's gonna be Laurel Van Ness. Do you think it's gonna be her? Fuck it, yeah, might as well be. And who's gonna win? Oh, Cardona and the mystery partner. And whoever the fuck, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, we'll keep that in mind. We got that one the same. Next up, we have Tag Team Gold on the line. Violent by Design putting up their titles against Willie Mack and Rich Swan, the Good Brothers, and not TJP and Falaba. Huh. Exclusive breaking news, Impact Wrestling said that TJP is out for Slammiversary. Fall out by, I do not see him going out alone. I don't think he's going to get a mystery partner. They said a four-way will still happen. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I can't think of a time. I don't see what the problem show. is. Fall out by is two people. Damn. Equivalent, equivalent size wise, he is. But still, man, I, I don't, I don't see it. This is the yeah, full. Team. I wouldn't want to see that anyway. To be honest, I don't know, man. There's still gonna be a four way, so there's a chance that Falaba comes either by himself, he comes out with another partner, or a totally different tag team comes out. That's what I'm. Team. That's what I would hope for. Whoever it is, gonna, I'm not even gonna guess. I'm not even gonna You're guess. not gonna guess. I'm trying to think. I don't even think there are any, like, I can't think of no tag teams right now that are like. Unless this is a work and Finn Juice is back in the States. That's the only. Mm, there you that. go. I, that's the only. At Slammiversary, too? That would be dope. I that mean, they should just pay me for booking at this point. But uh, that's besides the point. But any, in any case, I am going to go with <sighs> my heart. My heart is telling me it wants to go with Rich Swan and Willie Mack, right? Because Rich Swan been putting down, he put in work, deserves the tag team time. Willie, Willie Mack's kind of been like the gatekeeper for these new guys coming in for 2021, so he deserves the tag team time. Right? But I don't think the Good Brothers are going to be around much longer, and my mind is telling me this is their last title run, capitalized off of it. And when they lose it, you could build an even better tag team. You could build a Rich Swan willing back towards the Good Brothers and make it mean even more with the Good Brothers on their way out because I think, I think they're AEW bound. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, man. I'm going to go with the Good Brothers for this one. That's what I was thinking. Not so much of the synopsis after the fact about like I completely forgot that you know their contracts are probably coming up soon. It's like and ten. It's like a good ten, eleven months. It'll be, it'll come by fast though. You can get a good run out of them and um. Yeah, when Kenny loses the belts, they could lose the belts as well. <clears throat> right, and you know, Callis is over there, and, and well, he's doing both now. But yeah, he's in AEW, so. I mean, I don't. I really you don't see why the Good Brothers and they're on fucking Dynamite more than they're on Impact. Like, <laughs> yeah. so like I don't. I mean, I don't understand the point of it right now. But whatever. But um, no, I mean, <clears throat> it's the partnership. Why not? Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're the only ones doing the partnering. You know, it's the Good Brothers every week. Like they're on both shows. Like we get a couple, like, you know, New Japan Strong or New Japan. Guys out of the out of Finn Juice, which that would be a great ass, you know, booking decision to make that happen. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go with the Good Brothers as well, though. I wanna, yeah, you know, I really wanna go with Swan and Mac. <laughs> the heart, Brody. the heart, but the mind, the mind, tell me the Good Brothers. Next up, we have the women's tag team titles on the line. It's Fire and Flavor taking on. Havoc and Rosemary. I think Havoc and Rosemary take the win. Um, nothing wrong with Tasha and Kiara Holy losing. They could always get them back. That division's kind of built around them. They could be three, Word. four, five, six, seven time champions. And I don't think anybody would complain because they're so good. But um yeah, 
I think I think Havoc and uh and Rosemary take this one. Again, too many of these the same. That's all right. That's all right. We got uh, one. We got one different. So that's right. a, that's a start. Yeah, I think the way they're building it up for Rosemary and Havoc to actually be a team, or you know, Havoc joining the Decay, they got to go all in on this. You know, just like they did with Rachel Ellering and Jordan Grace. You know, this is pretty much not pretty much the same thing, but you know, Jordan was going into that tag team match without knowing her partner, but then got a partner who was pretty much, you know, just as her, just as good as her in the ring, you know. So they came in sync just like that the first time meeting each other, and they become champions on the first night tagging together, you know. So maybe the same, you know, lightning a strike twice. For uh, Rosemary and Havoc. Hopefully. We'll see what happens. I think it'll be a decent match either way. Yes. Next up, the ultimate X match, the show stealer. It's probably going to be my favorite match of the night, considering all the guys that are in here. We got Trey Miguel taking on Ace Austin, taking on Josh Alexander, the champion, <clears throat> taking on Chris Bay versus Rohit Raju, and finally the legend, Petey. Williams, uh, man, I don't know, it is tough because the way they've been building Chris Bay, right? Looks like, looks like he's gonna win, but it's like, damn, Trey Miguel's kind of due for one, and they might pull the swerve, and give it to Trey. It's just I don't know, like my gut is selling me Trey, but the way they've been building up Chris, man, I'm just gonna go with Chris Bay. Uh, I want to go with Chris Bay. I really do. But I don't know. You picked up the victory tonight on uh, on Impact, last night on Impact. Ah, that's usually the precursor that they don't, you know, they don't win on at the pay-per-view. But um, fuck. Because I don't <laughs> want to – because I want to pick them, but I don't. I'm like, shit, man. Fuck it. Uh, you know something. Maybe a Josh Josh Alexander retains. You know, there's always a possibility of that. You know, I'm 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 you know I'm I don't think it's gonna happen, but I'm gonna make that decision. That's that's what I'm going with because out of all of this, I see like the story has pretty much been about you know Ace Austin and and uh, Rohit Raju. You know them coming together. These guys are, uh, you know, building their little fucking group up or whatever. So it's like them. Everybody's talking about them. Then everybody's talking about, you know, what Chris Bay is doing. But, like, there's a champion and there's a champion, you know, who's going to be defending that title in this match. And he's just as good as those guys. So I'm going to shine a little light on uh, Josh Alexander. All right. Uh, there's another different one. So we might, we might both get that one wrong, but who knows? Yeah, I don't care about that one. That's <laughs> shot. We'll see what happens on that. Honestly, I don't care who wins. Like, I'm a fan of all no. these guys, so I'll yeah. be a, like, however they do it, I won't complain about anything. No. But I, I would I like for my pick to win. Yeah, this is one match I don't care who wins. I think all guys would be great representatives for the exhibition. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Diana Perazzo taking on a mystery opponent, putting her championship on the line. I say Mickey James, Mickey James, right? I think if she comes back, she wins the title. I want to say Mickey James too, but we're getting Sue Young. Again? So, I, think so? Now I'm gonna go with Mickey James. I might as well. They did the trash bag. <laughs> they did the trash bag bit. You know, they even said hardcore country on you know on this episode of Impact. Yeah, yeah, so, which is her. Yeah. yeah. So I. I don't know, too many, too many Easter eggs. Do you think she's going to win, though? Yeah. Nah. She's a legend, bro. She's a three, four nah. time. I don't know. I think she could do it. Deanna could always get it back. Deanna could use the rub. Ask for anniversary. Who else does she have left? I don't know. Somebody else. Taylor Wilde. She, Taylor Wilde. She hasn't faced Taylor Wilde. Hey, where the one. fuck has she been, though? Who, I don't exactly. even know what happened to her. She might even got hurt. 
unless she's the one returning. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I don't mean it like that because I just said it. No, I know that I, happened. Yeah. But yeah. listen, not at Slam Reversary. I don't, I, yeah. honestly, I take that back. I wouldn't mind seeing it. But me, you know, armchair booking, I'll admit it. Me trying to book the show from my liking, I would like it to be Mickey James. I don't know, man. It's, uh, it's gonna this be shit is shit. difficult. I know. I know. <laughs> We're guessing, like, we got to guess who it is and guess if they are they going to fucking win too. That would be great if it's if it's somebody crazy that we didn't even see coming. But we'll see what happens. We got to get into the main event. Kenny Omega with Don Callis taking on Sammy Callahan, putting his Impact World Championship on the line in a no disqualification match. I'm going with Kenny Omega. It's going to be a good match, though. Hollywood match. They're going to beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. <laughs> what you just said. Uh, totally agree. It's going to be Kenny. It's going to be Kenny. It's going to be a hell of a card. I think we're going to have a nice review. After that, you will see the review. We're going live after Slam Reversary. Um, I believe that probably around 11.30. No exact time. I can't give you an exact time right now, but somewhere around. What if it ends at midnight? Are y'all still, like, are we still going to do it? Yes, we're still going live. We might God be totally, damn it. That's what we might, do. Might be totally intoxicated, but that's what we're going to do. No Mary Jane. No Mary Jane will be live streaming. But it's all good. Oh shit! Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a round table pop. Mary Jane is exclusive only to Blunt Impact and Jones and Jerome. But uh, but this was a fun episode of Blunt Impact. We got our predictions in for Slam Anniversary. I hope you guys get your Slam Anniversary predictions in. You can follow the True Heel Heat family on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Don't forget to like. Share, comment. Did I say share? Yes, I did. Subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications so you can know when we drop videos. Ness, where can we find you at? You guys can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at skinny underscore underscore Kravitz. Catch me right here on True Heat YouTube channel. One half of Fusion of Honor. My man, the Stat King, man of a thousand and four numbers, where we review MLW Fusion and Ring of Honor. We just had the best in the world pay per view review. We just had MLW. I was at the MLW show, Battle Riot. You know, hit the True Hill Heat Instagram account. Check all those pics out. Show some love. Uh, you catch me on Joyce and Jabronis and Boom right here, Blunt Impact, my man, Chris G. We review Impact Wrestling. You can also catch me, Chris G, and RAC on NXT because our show is NX3. Bars. I'm a battle max caster. Oh, that'd be a sight to see. You can find me at True Hill Chris G right here on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. Blunt Impact Joints and Jabronis, NX3, my man. The three-time baby making champion. Yes. Now we're good brother Romeo Anthony Carone. I want to thank you guys for catching another episode of Blunt Impact. Remember, remember Slam Anniversary. We got that show going live, that, baby. That live stream sure. coming up. So we hope you guys enjoyed that. We encourage you guys when we get on the live streams to hit those super chats so we can keep doing what we do at a higher quality. For you guys. We do it for you guys. We don't do it for ourselves. We do it for you guys. And we actually kind of have fun doing this shit. But, uh, and we're fucking sorry. great at it. Yes, we're, we're great. We are the best in the world. Like, we just had best in the world, a ring of honor. It's True Hill Heat. Because we on fire. Look in my eyes. What do you... I don't show. That'll do it for this episode of Black Impact. For the three time. Three time. Three time. Baby. Making. Champion. Nest. I am your boy Chris G for Mary Jane. We will see you guys next time. It's hot out there. Wash your ass. (laughs) (laughs) 
It really is. Y'all do that shit every night. I come right home. I'm getting the shower. I'm like, y'all feel filthy as fuck out here.